Director joining us now, Ben Reitzis, Amelius Research Head of uh, Technology Research, and it's good to see you, uh, Ben. I, I figure it. You'd have to say the stock. You could call it a bear market. I guess, although it, the bull market was like nothing, nothing, the likes of which we've never seen. I'm telling Trump. Uh, but it, it was an amazing uh, bull run. It's down about 23 percent, though. Is it in a bear market or is, is this uh, a time to actually catch a, is it a falling knife? <laughs> I don't think it's a falling knife, Joe. And it's, it's good to be with you on uh, such an important day in, in our history, uh, in New York especially. Um, I think that NVIDIA right now, you know, last year, actually, if you remember, um, it, it, it took a break in the back half of the year. This is more severe. I think there's some macro worries and whatnot. But the, the big thing about uh, NVIDIA is they're in a product transition. And um, the rest of semis also is, is absorbing the potential recessionary risks and some other things going on. So I think that in terms of NVIDIA, uh, one of the big surprises on our last call was taking gross margins down in the near term. And semi stocks that hit that usually with a gross margin bump uh, tend to, you know, out, uh, not perform anymore for a little while until they get that going again. But I think they'll come out on the other side of that uh, within a few quarters. And I think that'll be a big topic uh, when he speaks later today uh, if folks are able to ask questions. We watched NVIDIA sort of ignore everything not related to AI. I, I mean, uh, the Fed, uh, global growth concerns, uh, what was happening in, in other uh, semiconductors. Are you saying now it might, it might actually paying be paying attention to the, the possibility of a global slowdown, uh, growth? I mean, I watch oil and look at the 10-year. Uh, uh, we're going to see inflation numbers today, but, but there are some macro things going on that, that are, might be uh, reaching a, a, a more climactic point than before with NVIDIA. Is it, is it subject to that or no? Well, I think that they have a lot of things going on that are immune. I think the semis in general uh, are having potentially another macro scare uh, here in the back half of the year. And, yeah. and, you know, NVIDIA caught up in that. But in terms of AI in general, I think there's a lot of tailwinds, secular tailwinds that uh, over the over the long term we're going to be we're going to be doing really well. I, I feel like uh, they're insulated a bit from some of these macro swings like in PCs, some of the commodity servers potentially and some other areas. So I think they're doing really well. W one of the issues is they're sucking a lot of the air out of the room and uh, folks need to allocate their spending towards AI, which is potentially impacting some other sectors. That's been bigger potentially in the first half. I think that's going to be a big narrative again next year. So um, look, I, I wish the macro uh, was was data was better, but I, I feel Nvidia is pretty well insulated. But I do feel like it's it's gobbling you know a lot of mind share within the sector in general with this sell off. Welcome to Market Overtime. I'm Oliver Rennick. The clear and dominant theme in 2024, of course, has been artificial intelligence, its ripple effects on the economy, and its huge concentration in moving the U.S. stock market. Question now is what inning are we in and how much more there is left to disrupt? We're here to talk disruption today with Jim Harris. He's a public speaker, an author, a thought leader, and commentator on some of the biggest tech trends a former Canadian politician as well, head of the Green Party. Jim, you got an interesting background and interesting thoughts. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, Oliver. Tell us about how you came into the world disruptive tech. You wrote a book in the early 2000s dealing with some of the power of the internet. What do you see in the power of AI today? How did the two overlap? Well, in 1993, I saw the power of the web when it was born, and I was telling my clients, this is gonna change everything. And they were looking at me like I had three heads on my shoulder. Uh, fast forward to today, and we, the, the web is integrated into everything that we do. Well, this AI revolution is just as profound, but it's happening at warp speed. And so we're seeing more change in a shorter period of time than we've ever had in the business community. So AI is gonna transform everything. And when we look at ChatGPT, it was adopted by 100 million people in the first 60 days, making it the fastest adopted technology in the world's history. When you look at uh, the adoption right now, it seems like a lot of it's coming from the AI side. A lot of these big, big tech companies 
the hyperscalers buying up all the hardware. What do you see, Jim, as the uh, customer kind of endpoint? Are we to products yet? Uh, are we at that stage or is it still a hardware build out? We are at the very early stages of this revolution. Uh, it, it's literally in its infancy. What I predict we're gonna see happen is people take the tools and there are literally thousands of AI applications that are out there. We're gonna see really intelligent companies take the uh, tools, the platforms, and build niche applications on them. So let's take ChatGPT and apply it to the insurance industry and build a, a stack on top of the tools that we have that automate processes in the insurance industry, whether it's life insurance, car insurance, uh, home insurance, B2B insurance. So really smart developers are racing into this market. So there's a huge influx of capital, of venture capital. Uh, so we're at early, early stages of this revolution. You know, NVIDIA, and, and we just go, oh yeah, that's pretty good, you know, what, whatever they, they happen to be. And a company that size, there's, it, it just can't last where the margins stay where they are. So what would be, what would be considered, okay, margins are falling more, they're spending even more money, you know, trying to make the next generation uh, chips than we thought. And this is actually troubling that margins are going to drop to this low because they're, they're still going to be so rich even after a, yeah. a pretty big drop. Well, the thing is, NVIDIA you know, is putting together tens of thousands of little parts of these chips, and it's very complex. They, they do deserve to uh, have a very high ASP with the complexity of their product. And the other thing is they, uh, over time, are going to have more software and services, which are very high margin. So what some other companies, maybe Apple and others, get into this area where their business uh, becomes, it is an ecosystem, and they can tap into other elements of that. So I think that right now we have this, this Blackwell uh, production issue, temporary, it hits gross margin. And then I do think they grow other things such as software and cloud and, and other things that uh, allow the margins to stay relatively high. But yes, 78% gross margin was rarefied air. It was bound not to stay there. They had, they had said take it down to 75 over time uh, for, for you know the intermediate term. And it's just gonna be a little lower than that in the next couple quarters. And then I think it can go back there with some positive mix and better production. But you gotta watch that, Joe. It's a great point. Um, part of the reason, you know, is like the revenue acceleration is just so amazing. They really can't keep up on an OPEX side. Um, and their margins are in rarefied air. It, it, it's better than elite software companies right now. So you do have to watch it carefully, but uh, I feel like actually it'll get hit a little near term and then uh, power out. This AI revolution launched by OpenAI in November of uh, 2022 with the launch of uh, ChatGPT 3.0 is a democratization where now anybody can take this AI tool and the thousands of others that have emerged and build upon them. So the democratization of AI, the froth that we're seeing with literally thousands of companies being born and focused on these niche applications, this is how it is fundamentally different and than the AI of past. Now, if we go back to the web, the web became a platform that allowed others to innovate. Like Amazon uh, began, like Jeff started Amazon because he looked at the exponential growth rate. He was working on Wall Street. He looked at the exponential growth rate, the Kager on web adoption, and he said, I got to do this. And he started with books. We're going to see that same kind of progress with AI, companies are gonna focus on a minimum viable product, get adoption, get traction, and build out. So today, Amazon sells everything. It started with books because a book is a book is a book. When you look at the uh, status of uh, those products right now, Jim, what's most compelling? Like, what do you think we can hold up as sort of the, 
main uh, uh, product or service right now of AI? Is it still generally like the open to the public uh, chat GPT and other uh, applications? We've also got some hardware like Microsoft's got Copilot, Apple's coming out with the phone. Uh, we haven't seen the latter uh, in detail yet, but where do you see the kind of uh, initial uh, products right now is leading? Like what it, what's most interesting to you? So on the hardware side, of course, everybody's talking about NVIDIA because it makes the chips uh, and chips need definition. You know, when I think of chip, I think about what used to be an Intel chip like right. this. They're huge These are humongous chips like Blackwell is humongous. And Facebook has bought $10 billion worth of uh, NVIDIA's chips right. um so uh it's like an engine uh, it's more like a car yeah engine. it's really an engine it's it's like oh my god it's like a mainframe of days past but um each one of these so obviously there's a hardware play in which is why you see the huge market cap of nvidia so uh that's one play but let me also get your take on NVIDIA, Dan. You know, one concern there, I want to get your take on this, is this idea that big tech is going to start coming under some pressure uh, from their investors to just kind of slow down this rush of AI spending. Uh, how, what do you make of that concern, Dan? What could it mean for NVIDIA? Brian, uh, excuse me, Josh, we're, si we're sitting at a very interesting uh, juncture here because you have the cloud vendors, uh, uh, Amazon and, and Microsoft, um, Google investing aggressively because they see revenue growth opportunities in their core businesses and new opportunities around generative AI. And so they're spending aggressively. There is some concern uh, around the capacity, but in my view, they're going to be able to, to absorb that uh, as we think through the coming quarters and over the next year or two. As far as uh, NVIDIA is concerned, there's a little bit of a delay in, in Blackwell, their new platform, but demand for Hopper remains healthy. And, and I think the key for NVIDIA is to continue uh, to execute on its product cycles. What, what's happening with, with uh, artificial intelligence, there's really a, a, a whole host of new uh, use cases. If you think about the healthcare world, uh, drug discovery, uh, studies around climate change, in manufacturing, you have uh, digital twins. And so there are a lot of new opportunities for both the cloud companies as well as traditional enterprises to, to uh, transform themselves over the next couple of years. And NVIDIA really sits at the heart of that opportunity. So we continue to like that name, oh, oh, appreciating, of course, that there is some near-term volatility. Uh, that's one play. But we think about the AI revolution currently in terms of text because we think about chat gpt Correct. and uh really it's not just about text it's also about images with dolly and mid-journey i can create my own images and so i can go to some image service and say hey i'd like uh uh you know a search around for my presentations and have the word why in cursive on a cork board with a pin mm -hmm. uh, on a piece of white paper, or I can go to Dali and Mid Journey and say, create a prompt just like that and get the image for free rather than paying $500 to license it from some stock image service. So we're seeing it, it creep into marketing around images. It's not just images, though. It's now video, where I can create video using AI. And this raises a whole issue about deep fakes, and we've seen some things already in this election cycle but um, in the US. So it's not just text. It's uh, audio. It's video. It's images. All of these things are beginning to 